<laughs> Just one hit. Then I gotta go.
in action, B. Hey. Let me hit the weed before I go eight. Don't play. Turn a nigga day to a cold case. Your decision, nigga, your fate. I'm pumped up. Can say go to Jose. Do you with the pump and Drake? Go to full flame. Do I want to something? Slame hope for no change. Fuck it, I let him live. Something I never did. I plan on taking this mission to somewhere I never did. I cook something again, bitch. I'm the top chef. They woke the lock ness. I must supply press. Fuck your top best. I buck and chop chest. Regurgitate rap. That's tough to digest. Cop the proper vest. Approach is not next. Doctors try their best, but fuck the process. They doing a lot less. Or doing as I said. Say nothing, none of you niggas is doing to stop this. Murk. I was cool, I was cool, tricked them all, played the fool, not a mall, on the move, on the move, nigga we gon' slide through, but let a nigga get touched for bus, gotta let it eat boom, like so they boom, then I make so that they boom, click get a nigga hold this slip, spit on my broom, pull it up I get those soon, hit the phone, niggas better
Because you don't need 20 friends. You just need three motherfuckers and you can take over a country. Okay, that's what we're confused as Americans. We think we need all these motherfuckers. You give me three bad motherfuckers and you're finished. You understand me? You're fucking finished because we got each other. The following program deals with a controversial, controversial subject. The theories expressed are not the only possible interpretation. The viewer is invited to make a judgment based on all of the information.
Yo, what is good, everybody? Welcome to another Wednesday night, another Wednesday night review on Beyond Wednesdays. Um, I woke up a little late from a nap. I closed my eyes for like two seconds. Next thing I know, I'm 10 minutes late for the show. But tonight's going to be a very easy show. Tonight, you guys, I have a... Seven eighty-two card PSA submission to go through. So... Oh. We're going to go through that tonight. And then we're going um, to talk about uh, New Comic Book Day. We're going to talk about uh, the Caitlin Clark Superfractor selling for like $78,000. Probably sold for more than her yearly. What's her yearly pay going to be in the WNBA? It's probably going to be um, a little bit more than that, I'd imagine, right? So we'll talk about that. Um, what else do we got? Um, Vinny, what's going on, brother? Uh, we've got the market Yo, report. Um, we've got uh, more card stuff to talk about, more comic stuff to talk about. Uh, I've got some uh, original art on the market report tonight, so that's going to be fun to talk about. And um, yeah, how you doing, brother? Doing good, man. Doing good. Uh, busy, busy, yeah. busy. But everything is good, man. Yeah, I'm the same way, dude. I've been just crazy busy the last couple of weeks, and it makes it harder to try and come up with uh, uh, content all the time. So it's nice yeah. to have a it's it's nice to have a uh, PSA submission show up finally. Nice. You know? so, That's awesome. Yeah, man. After the OA show yesterday, I picked up. Uh, Picked up a piece of art. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. What'd you get? Anything cool? I just got it. Let me go open it. I'll come right back. All right. Uh, I haven't opened it. I haven't even opened it. Just picked it up. All right. Like, Sounds give, good. Give me two minutes. All right. Um, yeah, that's that's awesome. So if you guys didn't see it, check out last week's uh, original art show. We're gonna um, continue doing that on uh, special occasions. We'll just do original art specials. We'll try to do you know at least one a quarter, if not more, Wh whatever I can get, uh, you know, to create that show because that show's so much fun and a lot of people are um, enjoying it from what I hear. So we'll definitely um, look more into that. I'm I'm pretty I am pretty heartbroken though. Tonight is the very last. Coyotes game uh, as we know it in Phoenix, and it's kind of a bummer. So I'm going to go watch that after the show. I'm not looking forward to it, but we'll see how it all plays out. Hopefully, in a couple of years, they'll make, you know, maybe that same team will come back, but I seriously doubt it. I seriously doubt it. So, all right. Um, let me see here. Let's run in, let's jump into. Let me see what's up with everybody in the chat. What up, everybody in the chat? Um, thanks for uh, appreciate all you guys that hang out live. You guys know that's such uh, a great way to support us. Hit that thumbs up button if you guys haven't had a chance. Sub up if you're not subbed up. Sub up. We do great content uh, almost every night of the week. I think there's only a couple nights of the week where, depending on what's going on, we don't have content coming from this channel so make sure you check it out all right what is this holy cow remember this cover oh wow dude uh miles morales 13 yeah first uh billy morales wow bro yeah that's pretty sick yeah i was kind of want to hunt <laughs> right after the show and I, I don't know how but that got listed like literally during the show so um and it was reasonable and i was like i'm gonna grab this um miles morales 13 yeah man Wh why do you think uh you, you thinking something about that character or what i just thought it was interesting it was kind of like one of the hot books over the pandemic and, oh yeah um i think everything miles is hot and just kind of her, her being uh you know her like his sister um, I just think it's something, you know, kind of interesting to have, but I also love the cover. I think yeah. it's like just artwork wise. It's yeah, amazing. That's badass. And actually, even the pencils are like just super sick. 
Yeah. I thought it was I thought it was dope. So yeah, hold on. Keep that up for a second. Like, let me let me put that back up. Yeah, can you uh put that closer to the I want to see Sp- uh Spider Man. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude, that's cool. Yeah, that looks great. It's gonna look so, great. I mean, aside too. from everything else, it's just a I, I think it's just a cool piece of art. So nice, dude. Yeah. So you know, uh, uh I I I'm sure a lot of people watched that show and got bit by the original art bug. I mean, I I hadn't bought something in a little while, and I was like, uh, I was searching, and I was like, darn it, <laughs> why did I find something that I want? <laughs> so, yep, that was a direct correlation to that show. Um, Brad is asking, did you guys discuss inks versus pencils? We we talked about it a little bit. Um, what's happening nowadays is you know because you have the the penciler who has potentially a, a page of pencils you have a Shackle another Cat page which is, which is potential potential inks so they they could be separated um sometimes it's blue lines with inks so it's so I think collectors sometimes they want to try to own both if there is if there is another one that exists out there, um, or the other thing I've heard is that you know collectors will want the the version that's closest to the final. And I think Mike last last week spoke about um, you know him personally wanting the pencils because that's kind of like the original. Original. drawing that the artist did so um i'm not it depends for me it depends on the artist if it's the if it's an artist that i really like i I would want the pencils if it's something that i'm just buying because of like significance i might want the you know the final product that was used for the actual cover so um yeah that's kind of like my uh my sort of take on it the digital part breaks my heart, man. I think more and more about that as we had the conversation, and it just breaks my heart that so much of this is is going to digital, and there's not going to be that original art. You know, it's there's so much of that, dude. Like I've tried over the years to buy so many different things, and everything is digital. And you kind of wonder, and you're like, well, why would you know if you could still sell this? Why wouldn't you want to? just do it traditionally so you could at least sell it. But a lot of people have just, I think that the process is just a lot faster for them. And they're just like, ah, I don't, I don't really care too much. Yeah. Um, I've seen, I've seen some people what's going on hood. Um, I've seen people do it kind of a few different ways. I've seen some people like, for example, they'll draw some of it digitally and then they might draw a page or two, you know, like an important page. They might just actually draw the page um and then as i was talking about the other day like those one of one sort of mono prints people have done some of that type of stuff so even if it's digital it'll be like a one of one copy like like batman they do that a lot with batman like a lot of those pages now. what up hood what's up guys can you hear me yeah we can hear yep. you yep sound on. sound good brother i do okay yeah, yeah. Check. you cannot hear us yeah, you remember in school when they put the big headphones on you? Beep. Yeah. Beep. Beep. <laughs> All right. Uh, did you guys go to uh, your new comic? You guys go get any comics? Bro, I I got out of work late, man. I was like, fuck. Yeah, I didn't have a chance yet. So this is the Torin Clark Amazing Spider-Man two fifty five variant that they're doing. That looks sick. Right? I don't know why I like that. I like it, though. Is that fucking oh. Santa Claus, bro? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are we doing? Yeah. Bro, did you see Donny Cates on Twitter today? Bro, this is crazy, dude. What? What is this boy doing, dude? You know, like, people ask him a straight-up question, and he's all... Yes. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, he's just fucking with on, people. Dude. Yeah, dude. Like, you evidently don't have brain damage to be like wasting people's time, dude. You know, these are legitimate fans. That's how you treat your fans, bro. 
Yeah, somebody says, when are you going to call me back? He says, I have brain damage. Come on, man. Uh, somebody mm -hmm. says, if you had to recommend one of your books for a, a new reader, what would you choose? And he says, uh, Thanos Wins and God Country. So that's cool. Uh, he said, somebody asks, so glad to see you back. Describe the time away in one word. F the haters. Hope all is well. Love the come up story. Ready for the comeback? Question mark. And he goes, haters? What are haters? One uh, somebody says, um, "Where is it? Right here." What characters at Marvel who ha you have who you haven't already written would you like to write? Any DC characters or teams you're interested in? And he just says yes. God Country ad adaptation still a thing? Yes, that's cool. If Noam did make it to screen, which actor would you like to see portray him? Jim God. Carrey. Yeah. Come on. With this time away, has there been a character that you've been more interested in writing? Yes. This one makes me think he's kind of funny. He's got a sense of humor. Do you have any tips for aspiring writers that want to work in the industry or artists even? And he says, always wear a seatbelt. Oh shit! Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna play that to the very end, aren't we, dude? You know, <laughs> this dude got his ass kicked, knocked out in the bar, something. <laughs> you know, and we're just gonna milk this car accident thing. You know, whatever. Here's where. How many did he get? He got like two hundred, two hundred questions. So, well, he's on his way back. It sounds, man. That's a good thing to well, me. Well, I um, is it image for uh, God Country, right? Is it image or um, who put out God Country? It's image, right? I think so. So they're doing a uh, like a True Believers God Country issue one or something like that. So it makes me think that Donnie's going to be doing something. Hopefully, you know, like a reprint of God Country. Yeah. So, you know. That's so random if if something isn't happening. Have you heard anything, Vinny, on God Country? About about what? Sorry, I, I God just God up. Country. Uh, Donny Cates' uh, uh, mini series. No, no, no. I know what it is. But what what was the question you were saying about like no? What, like, like have you heard anything from uh, from? Is there any? Uh, Rumors announcement or, for yeah. tv or anything like movie or i haven't heard anything but i mean while we were on the oa kind of subject like i actually own like a lot of art from god country um uh so no i have not heard anything That's but smart, i really love that series yeah, yeah i really love that series when it came out um and dude uh, it was fucking badass dude yeah it was a badass and at that time it was before like people really got into the oa and the pages were like 100 bucks or 150 bucks it wasn't bad at all um so i was kind of i was kind of jumping in on a lot of that stuff but no i haven't heard anything at bro all. and uh, then um did you guys hear what scott snyder's got uh coming yeah so that's what bro, i wanted to talk that's about huge man yeah this is, is yeah this is a big deal mm. but it, it got it's got it's got me kind of wondering like what the it doesn't sound like a fresh idea scott snyder's ultimate line for dc is to be called absolute comics so they're going to do a basically an ultimate version of DC called Absolute, which is interesting. Um, basically says, um, where do they talk about it here? Absolute Comics will also follow sometime after Mark Wade's Absolute Power event in July and August. The title similarity is a nice touch as that as it is the fact that DC still has the trademark on the Absolute line of oversized slipcase line of hardcover volumes launched. Uh, the Absolute Authority now. Any chance that they're moving to vodka? Either way, they feel free to. So, let me see here. It's the fact that you got Scott Snyder back on D back with DC. I want to see what I mean. Absolute Didn't he comics leave for Substack or whatever. 
yeah, it feels like it's that's all it is. It's just a Substack type thing. So it says, for a little while now, Bleeding Cool has run the gossip of an upcoming publishing project at DC Comics being spearheaded by Scott Snyder, one that has been compared to Marvel Comics' Ultimate line that reimagined a number of main characters in new continuity, recreating them from the ground up. We don't fucking want that. (laughs) We don't fucking want that. We know the history of the characters. We... I'm s I don't want that. I'm sorry. I'm I'm pissed at this type of shit. Like just go write a Batman story, dude. Don't tell mm-hmm. you don't have to tell us the the fucking the the s- redoing it from the ground up. I don't want that. Fuck. Like what the hell? I, mean, I was I, I, I had such high hopes for Super Sons. You remember that that you know, right on uh when you just first felt like there was going to be uh this team up and you know and it just they didn't know what to do with it they didn't have the only reason that they're doing this is because of um the ultimate line that marvel's doing which why copy each other it's funny because they're doing it like right now (laughs) as as the line is kind of coming back out uh, and being in and it's popular now again so it's like jesus it's dude well they you know they did in the 80s and you know it's funny they showed a uh, crisis the reprint of crisis when crisis came out secret wars was out and you know it's just you know it's what they've always done i'm i just feel like they don't know they don't know how to tell stories anymore. I don't know what what it is. What else can it be? They're just retelling the same thing over and over and over. I get it. Like if you look if you, if you want to talk about storytelling and stuff, there's only so many plot points you can have. But th- it's not even about that. It's they're using the same character and just retelling the same story over and over and over. This is how he got bit by the spider. Uh this is how, you know, he met other superheroes. Uh, this is how this bad guy came and started in his life. And it's the same exact shit. Just different colored crayons drawing it. Whatever, you know? It's fucking dumb. I, I just think, like, uh, Donnie and Stegman, like, that was a powerhouse team. And like i've said it before like if they were to end up on amazing spider-man that would be a game changer you know i was hoping that you know scott snyder's better than better than doing this uh absolute crap you know what i mean this is what you do with a new writer you know what i mean scott says, snyder's that guy that tells yes tells an epic yes story arc that you you're talking about in 20 years yeah you put scott snyder on superman and batman right that's the the yeah. cachet that that scott snyder has you know like you don't put him on this it's almost like he's being punished or something you know no, says, you want to come back to dc you got to write this dog shit <laughs> <laughs> bleeding cool understands however rather than some single creator focused line or something with major editorial driver such as Didio's New 52 or Jeff John's Rebirth, this is intended to be a more of a hands-off affair on Snyder's part. What? Huh? Huh. With the creators being given more of a carte blanche to achieve results closer to the all-star line, which was the same exact thing, with a major A-less creator on board. Also, rather than something separated from the main line like All-Star, the Ultimate Universe, or even Jim Shooter's New Universe back in the day, this will be something published in this will be something new. This is gonna be new. It's not gonna be like this or the one before it or the one before that. This is gonna be new. <laughs> I tell you, you want a great idea for a new comic book, bro? So I was thinking about this the other day. So what if the guys from Image wrote a comic about when they first got to Image and launched these titles? like the behind the scenes stuff in comic book form that away it's so easily adaptable they could turn it into a fucking movie yeah that's exactly what beyond a uh, bad idea is right i mean 
Well, kind of. Yeah. Kind of, right? I mean, just something adaptable that could be termed, but like, bad idea, like, they need to, I think, be more consistent. Like, it's just so random, like, and I get it, you know, like, some people, like, They're trying cool to figure that, out their but, thing, yeah. Yeah. It says here, yeah, it's um, almost like they need a home. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, bad idea needs to be, like, at DC or something to do something like with those imprint. characters. Or, yeah, yeah. It says here, because the... Oh, uh, but there will not be a reboot or even a relaunch of the main line that will remain intact continuity along with many creative teams will continue on. Because the other name I've heard of, which Absolute Comics is a part, is DC All In, the broader initiative Snyder and other creators have been working on. Make of that what you will. This is def this is most definitely being seen as an attempt to do New 52 right, alongside a DC rebirth with a more holistic approach. No, it's not. No, it's not. You're just telling us the same mm -hmm. old shit that you try to tell us every time. But in reality, this is just an easy way for you to pump a little extra money into your coffers um, when the shit has just hit the fan and you guys are are creatively uh, done. You can't think of a good story or a good tale to tell with a, a character who already has 80 years of fucking history behind him and would be really easy to tell a good story about. But I, I can't. I, other than that, I can't figure it out. It seems so stupid. And then Sam, here it says right here. Look, listen to this. Um, this will most definitely be being seen as an attempt to do New 52 right alongside DC Rebirth and the more holistic approach that the team on DC All In are aiming to give fans something bold while leaving alone what's already working. What? Huh? <laughs> It sounds like you're just restarting a character. You're not doing anything new and bold. If you're doing something new and bold, create a new character. And I expect to hear more, a lot more, at San Diego Comic-Con this year. Well, at least they'll be there. And I expect to hear more, a lot more, at San Diego. Announce in San Diego and launch for New York, maybe. What I'm hearing so far is I like it a lot. Yeah, of course you do. This is stupid, man. This yeah, just it just seems weird with James Gunn trying to like clean that up, you know, for his uh, his his universe, right? Then why would you allow someone to go and muddy it up, right? You're trying to build continuity, right? And you're trying to kind of mirror what Feige did at at uh, Marvel, which made that so successful, like from planning. Okay, we're going to take this and then we're going to world build. And it just seems, and then you're going to have someone go in there <laughs> and shit in the backyard. You yeah. Know? Did you guys see this? So, uh, Kirkman, the Kirkman con's going on right now, right? If I'm not mistaken, down in Kentucky. I think uh, Clutch is out there or he's going to be there soon. Um, it says, this is new news. Robert Kirkman uh, about the Walking Dead animated series. He says it can't happen quote until i get the rights back from amc listen to that yeah I didn't know he that's sold the rights. well you know he was in uh uh court with them for a long time about that wow. it says well, here typically when you when you do a deal like that too um like as from the legal side you have to carve out all those rights because a lot of times they're going to ask for any show any tv shows any spin-offs any spin-off characters uh and it probably the language always also included everything else you know related like anything media because uh, you also would have to think about scripted versus unscripted and all that stuff like a lot of times the language will kind of be blanket and cover a lot of it so if they weren't really thinking about that at the time that could also be I didn't read this article, but that could be why. <laughs> it says um, he he was asked about the animated series, and he says, I'd love to see it happen someday, but I don't think it'll be possible until I get the rights back for AMC. Uh, and then he said, um, 
in the letter hacks column of Walking Dead Deluxe 85. That's what he said. Skybound's The Walking Dead editor, Amanda LaFranco, added, there's been definitely, there's definitely been developments over the years for something like this, and a lot of fans over here that would still very much love to make it happen. That would be super cool to have a Walking Dead animated series that's faithful to the comic. That would be MC huge. Would let that go, to I'll be fucking honest. found it, bro. What is that? This is uh, the uh, Evangeline. Bro. Oh, nice. The Chromium. Yeah. <laughs> That's badass, dude. I knew I had it, bro. You don't think Walking Dead would let that happen or AMC would let that happen? They might let it happen, but I don't think they're going to let it happen with him. Let it go and let yeah. it happen. I don't. It's it's too, It was too big of a win for them. And I think any spinoff is probably still going to be a win for them, you know. So I, yeah. I don't think that would ever happen separately. So, you know, he's, he's, but a lot of times you don't really think about these things when you're entering into a contract so early on in, you know, I don't know when they did the deal or how long Walking Dead was running when they did the deal, but you don't really think of how big it can be. And I don't think anybody imagined how big Walking Dead would actually get as a TV show. Oh you know? no, not even close to having right i mean yeah how many comics get optioned and nothing happens i mean that that, they were probably just happy with with the show getting made at the time yeah damn uh this is funny to me (laughs) what happened hold on hold on this is funny you guys gonna laugh at this one X-Men 97 showrunner dispels groomer accusations towards Magneto. Oh, my God. <laughs> Come on, dude. <laughs> yeah, he's a cartoon dude, character, man. <laughs> dude, these people, dude. God damn it, dude. Where did um, they grow these fucking people, dude? Like, get over it, dude. Uh, right here on YouTube, baby. <laughs> Mickey Mouse does not want to fuck your dad. Come on, dude. You know, get over it, man. <laughs> Tired of this shit, dude. Ah, oh, dude. <laughs> Grooming, dude. Come on, bro, dude. <laughs> well, continue yeah, the on makers of uh, X Men '97. Yeah, and then we can put some uh, sexual innuendo clues so that it, only deviants can 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 find. You I know? thought it's like. I thought that this was a good uh, a page or a good uh, article written about all the cool comics that it have been referenced in the first half of uh, yeah. the X Men ninety seven. Starting off obviously with Trial of Magneto number two hundred, X Men number two hundred. We saw that Life Death, which is Uncanny X Men one eighty five and one eighty six. And let me go ahead and bring up the covers so you guys can reminisce with us. I mean, I I see this totally in my head, this cover right here. As soon oh, as, yeah. right? So there's the Forge. What a terrible cover that is. Oh. Yeah, it's an awful cover. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's so bad that you got to have it. You know what I mean? Yeah, oh. but I, I do, you know, I do love Barry Windsor Smith. It's yeah. just, oh, man. Yeah, this isn't it. Yeah. So there's that one for you know storm hanging out with forge magneto rogue romance this is an interesting one man because there never really was that right in the x-men too much <laughs> chad came dude what did he say he goes minimum fee at disneyland is 90 90 dollars joe was wrong mickey wants to fuck everybody <laughs> That was awesome. Uncanny X Men 269 is the uh, famous Rogue versus Marvel power thing, which is pretty cool. Shadow King's in it. But I don't remember what is it. How does it talk about? Let's see what it says. One of the more stunning subplots of X-Men 97 was the re- revelation that Rogue and Magneto had previously undisclosed romantic relationship. This was briefly teased during the uncanny X-Men run of Chris Claremont and Jim Lee when a depowered Rogue was stranded in the Savage Land. She and Magneto enjoyed a, ble- a brief flirtation, but nothing came of it in the main timeline. 
However, the two became a couple in the Age of Apocalypse reality where Magneto's powers allowed him to touch Rogue without issue. I did not remember that. Did you remember that? Mm -mm. The flashbacks detailing Rogue and Magneto's relationship in X-Men 97 reveal that their romance occurred before Rogue joined the X-Men. Um, man, that's interesting. I totally didn't even remember that. Shout out to Art T. Bear, Inker on this. All right. Uh, next, we have Uncanny X-Men 239 to 243. I loved the Inferno storyline. That's one of my all-time favorite X-Men storylines, so I was all stoked about all that. Um, that was just really cool. This one blew me away. I didn't know about this. When they did the whole Jubilee one where she was in the video game with uh, Sunspot. Is that who it was? Sunspot? says the Motendo half of X-Men 97's fourth episode paid homage to X-Men's influence on 90s video games. However, it also referenced the Crunch Conundrum storyline from the Wolverine solo comic. This story found Wolverine and Jubilee fighting against Mojo, a corrupted version of Jubilee from the future named Abscissa. Wow, I didn't know that either. I totally forgot about that. And I remember reading Wolverine at that time. Number 50 was that landmark issue. The Jerry Larry Hama was Larry Hama doing yeah. this? Yeah. Wow, man. Still a great cover, man. I want to go back and read this now. See, that's why X-Men 97 is so cool. Because it's causing us to do this. Like, oh, I totally didn't know. I don't remember that. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back and read this one now. Right, it's what we did when the movies were good, Brian. Yes, yes, yeah. When the movies were good, we were digging through back issues. Yeah, look, there's that's, a spiral. That's what we're missing, bro. Yep, I love Spiral as a character. I think Spiral is a cool character, and I've always loved Mojo. Now, like, don't hate me, but I hated the voice uh, actors in For Wolverine in nineties. Yeah, that for was the new so one or the old, old one? No, the 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 new one. Yeah, it was. I, it's hard. I, I got used to it, but I, yeah, I don't like yeah. the Magneto's voice, and I don't like how Magneto looks. He looks weird, dude. He looks like a vampire or something. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, all right, continuing New X Men two uh two thousand and one New X Men one fourteen to one fifty six. This is the famous Grant Morrison. Uh, Frank Quitely, Ethan Van Skyver run. And yeah, classic run. I have the omnibus for this. I love it. That's where you got the uh, clone gene stuff. House and Powers of X. Episode 5 of X-Men uh, also draws from House of X era. Hickman transformed the sentient island of Krakoa into a new mutant homeland. The attack on the party celebrating Genosha's acceptance. Oh, also resembles the Orcus assault. Oh, that's kind of, I, I, what? That's kind of stretching right there. That's a little bit of a stretch. Mutant massacre on Kenny X Men two ten to two thirteen. Great time period for comics. The whole Marauders thing. Yeah, that's cool. Very cool. So there you go. Uh, new comics out this week. Was there any big, big books that you guys could think of this week? I don't think there was anything too. Yeah. I was too bu too busy chasing prison basketball again. Oh, great! This is a one in twenty five Nightwing that I like. I think that's a cool. Did you cover. know the Spurs could end up with three picks in the first round? Jesus, wow. you're kidding me! Yeah, if Charlotte finishes out of the top six, the Spurs get their pick, and if um. Who's the other team? It's Charlotte and um, fuck. It's Charlotte and another team. It's uh, Toronto. Toronto can't finish in the top six, and Charlotte can't finish in the top seven. So if Charlotte if gets don't. the eighth pick, and uh, Toronto gets the seventh pick, the Spurs get those two picks. Wow. On top of their own pick. This is a good Maria Wolf cover. Superman 13. Uh, I like this Fuimara cardstock variant with Brainiac in the back. 
Alan Qua. So that's the one in 25. I don't like it. All right. There's Superman. Uh, World's Finest. You got the... Oh, great. Look at the, Here's a new logo foil variant. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Is Michael, <laughs> Turner, is Michael Turner doing it? Yeah, he's turning in his grave. Um... Here's another Maria Wolf variant. That's cool. These are perfect covers for her. There's the one in 25. Pass. Not too good. All right. Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Spider-Man. You've got the really good Blood Hunt homage cover. I like that. Yeah, That's this is dope. really good, man. I love that. I, I like this. You don't like it? It's all right. I think it's cool. <laughs> um, Wonder what Woman. You've got the uh, Lobos variant, but there's something up with this that I don't like. I think... She looks drunk, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Her face looks a little small. This is gorgeous, though, dude. This is a one in twenty-five sway. Mm. That's yeah, that's nice, bro. They gave her a nose like Caitlin Clark, dude. Yeah. I guess uh, Sway was watching a lot of Iowa basketball. <laughs> <bro>. <laughs> uh, Ultimate Black Panther three. You've got the Boss Logic variant. I like that. You've got the 1 in 10 Momoko design variant. Nice. Yeah, Storm. And then the you know 1 in what? 25 Storm. You know what Storm. we need, dude? You know what we need, Brian? It just now occurred to me, with all these characters they're creating in every single goddamn issue of, of new character, we got to have a who's who for Marvel now, dude. Yeah. You remember the who's who? So we yeah. know who the fuck who is? Yeah, they did DC? that. Marvel did that at some point, right? They did something did similar. They? Yeah. Oh, that's so. right. Uh, the the lettering. Yeah. yeah. They need to go back to that. Dude. Yeah. Stan they says also sell off those, uh, They sell those big uh, compendiums that have yes. all the characters yeah. listed. Like I think they, make, they update them like every year. Or yep. So. Yep. Good Stan Lord. Swagger says, off topic, but cover price recorded a sale for a CGC 10.0 killing joke for $28,800. Shut the hell up for real? Wow. Nice. Avengers Twilight number five. You've got the 1 in 25 Tony Daniel. Excuse me, which isn't that bad. It's just... No, it's not bad. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, when you hear books like that, monster books sell like that, do you, like for that kind of money, and then we're saying, yeah, the market's down. You know? This is a one in fifty right here. I, don't I just like think it. people have all these key books right now, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah, this one's a one in one hundred. Look at this. Wow. Yeah, that's a good cover right there. Yeah, that's good. Yep. So that's for Twilight. Spawn 352. That's a great cover. But this is a decent cover too. So they got the two covers. Both of them good. I want to start seeing the winners of that contest. Fall of the House of X. You have a 1 in 25 Asar variant that... I like Polaris as a character a ton, but I don't know if I like this one. It's not too bad. This is the one in one hundred, one in one, one in fifty uh, gist variant. And then this is the one in one hundred Pepe La Raz variant. A lot of one in one hundred variants lately. Spectacular Spider-Man number two has a one in twenty-five Mike Mayhew. I don't know if it's like like this where y'all are, but my my store's not ordering enough of any book to qualify for damn near anything these days. Yep. I don't blame them, man. Yep. Yeah. 
You well, remember when when you guessed right on on a cover A, right? <laughs> that that they didn't make like uh, hard to find variants. Like the the main cover was like if you didn't pick it up, that was it, right? Mm-hmm. And you guessed right, and you bought like ten copies, and then every it was going for like fifty, seventy five bucks. Yeah, and and you were pumped that you guessed right. Now there's no more guessing. They'll tell you, hey, wh- this is a one in a hundred. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. they're taking like all the hard work out, and they're taking the fun out of the hobby, dude. Yeah. I'm loving this. This is great. The Cobra Commander uh, storyline's great. The variants are good on it. Continue doing what you're doing, Skybound. Catwoman 64. You've got a 1 in 25. That's by Lyrics Lee. That's not bad. It's better than the normal stuff he puts out. And then this is a 1 in 50. Pass. Um, Dead X Men number four. You have a really good Yoon, uh, Jubilee variant. I like that. Mm-hmm. It's just open order, though, I think. Uh, Spider Boy, is there anything on Spider Boy? I don't know why they're not sh- letting me see. Yeah, there's the one in 25, Nick Bradshaw. That's kind of interesting. That kind of looks like the cover you just bought. <laughs> kind of, yeah, yeah. A, little, a little different. Yeah. yeah, a lot of, lot of, a lot of stuff happening in there. Yeah, that's an interesting cover. Uh, <laughs> Constantine, Batman, Off World, Green Lantern, War Journal number eight. That's a beautiful cover. But here's a Raza cover. That's cool. badass. Yeah. Let's see here. What else do we got? Spider Woman number six. Let's see how that looks. Can you blow that picture up, Brian? Yeah. yeah. The motorcycle. Yeah. God dang it. Bro, they made that one look like the... What's Ooh. his name? Ooh, look at that. Monera. It kind of looks Monera-ish, right? Right. It, it almost looks like a swipe of Monera. Yeah. Like the way it, it's drawn. That's Lunel Francis that you. One, th- that one's pretty cool. Like that one looks like, like, it's sneaky important, right? And the way it's drawn, it just it it looks the it looks like nice. it could be a pricey comet. Yeah, it's got that feel to it. Yeah, it's a good cover. Roxon presents Thor number one. <laughs> Roxon. Yeah, get the fuck out of here. This is look at that Nick Bradshaw. God, that's what Audi Granov. That's a one in fifty. Uh, that's pretty good. That's good. Doesn't mm. look like the Thor we know. So Ghost Rider Final Vengeance is just I wasn't a big fan of this, you know, but it looks great. I'm gonna check it out. I'll probably read these issues. I love this one in twenty five though. That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, let's see. What if Venom number three has got that great Linnell Francis U Doctor Strange Venomized cover? I wish it would have been bigger though, like closer. Um, you've got the one in ten design variant that looks pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah, and then you've got a one in twenty five Rod Rice variant that's really good. Really, really good. That's a great one in 25 cover. I love how the eye is there like that. It looks like that. Oh, okay. I see. I like that cover, yeah. Yeah, that was great. Um, Captain Marvel number seven. Is there any variants on that? Yeah, there's one in 25 Miguel Mercado. Whoa. Whoa. Hmm. That'll be a, a decent book. Mm-hmm. There's not going to be too many people that are like ordering that. Kind of a yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's going to be very interesting. Animal Pound, Star Wars, Mace Windu number three. You got this badass uh, Vader and the uh, 
Emperor yeah, I cover. like that one. Yeah. yeah, this is great. You have Giant Size Hulk, number one. You've got a really good Stormbreakers variant. Look at that. <laughs> That's crazy. It's yeah, it's confusing me. Yeah. And then there's... Shout out to John Bowway. Appreciate you, new subscriber. Here's the one in 25. That is awesome. Yeah, that is a cool one. Right? Mm hmm. Moon Man, that's the Kid Cudi stuff. Kill Your Darlings. I've heard that's good. Epic number nine. That's the Kudransky stuff. Sam and Twitch number two. Is anybody reading Sam and Twitch yet? No. <laughs> I didn't even realize it was back. All right. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Foot Clan stuff. Is there any good variants on that? There's a 1 in 10 Santos variant. That's not bad. Uh, Star Trek, Axe Slash, Vampirella, Star Wars, The High Republic, Saber for Hire. Pass. Here's the Penthouse Comics number two stuff. There's a lyrics cover. Whoa. Vecchio variant. Marguerite Savage variant. Jesus. Big Icky <laughs> variant. Holy cow. Uh, this is Cameron Stewart. Sosa Micah, wow. One in ten. Can you imagine that being a Catwoman cover? Yeah. That 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 was probably a Catwoman cover that um They told they her no. Lie. Yeah, they told her no. Yep. Well I say yes. <laughs> one in twenty five <laughs> Tula Lote. It's probably awesome. A Malefic maleficent variant. And then some censored versions <laughs> all right what else blade runner quick stops elvira we get some cool Elvira shit i'm gonna show you guys early later on or next in the market report ultimate spider-man number two third printing momoko everybody's gonna want this that's obvious uh, yeah yeah that one's okay yeah, yeah it's not bad yeah uh, re facsimile of Crisis on Infinite Earths Bloodshot Unleashed Reloaded, number two. Unleashed Reloaded, what <laughs> the hell? Jesus, <laughs> they put too many, yeah. too many adjectives. Yeah, that's... they talk about, yeah, Bloodshot Unleashed and Reloaded. Y this, yo, I don't know. This summer. Summer. <laughs> yeah i was at some uh i forgot which con i was at but it was like valiant is now partnered with like a book company to put their to publish their their shit i was like i don't know what's going on over there really yeah yeah there's a lot of people talking about i saw uh critical thinker or thinking critical i mean um do a really good video about the new valiant stuff and he was even saying he's like man Back when Dinesh had the company, Valiant, he was even talking about how great it was. He was like, "That it's it's nothing like it is now, and they aren't going to last hardly anything." And I, I didn't realize that the Valiant fans were that still that big of a fan even at that time period. That time, you know what I mean? Oh, they, bro. I would go to San Diego or whatever, and he'd have like these Valiant, like hardcore people they'd have like game nights they'd have like all types of stuff like surrounding the con and i was like damn like but that was the thing they would do every year and you know dinesh would embrace it and go there community build yeah get, you know yeah i mean people would get books and they, he had different giveaways and i mean but it's a real it was a real community and, and those people actually kind of moved over to that idea a yeah. lot of them but there's still some of them are still yearning for that era of valiant, valiant with the with those characters you know yeah the thinking critical guy named his kid after uh what's his name from exo man of war is it alric or whatever uh this is yeah, look at yeah. this this is a peach momoko one in ten design variant of killmonger 
Mm. That's badass. That's cool looking right there. There you go on that. And then Darkstalkers uh, Jetta 1. That's going to be a, a book that will be worth triple it in a couple months. Uh, Spectacular Spider-Man second printing, Umberto Ramos, third printing, Twilight. Rock and Roll Biographies, Iron Maiden. Where's Nate? Where's Nate? Get uh, get that signed by the band. Uh, third printing, Avengers Twilight. Batman First Night, second printing. Weapon X-Men number one, second printing. Yeah. This is the 1 in 25 Torrin Clark that I, we already showed. Wolverine, 44 second printing, Three Stooges, holy cow. Thundercats, Trump's number two, what is this? Okay, um, and that is about it. There we go, ooh, what's this? Washed in Blood. Hexpaw, all right. Never mind. That is a new comic book day. There we go. All right. So I want to go through the uh, market report with you guys really quick. There's some really good, uh, interesting stuff for the market report. I don't know if I can fix this damn. There we go. Fixed. What do you got there? Some some good uh, spawn books? Yeah, I've been, go I've been going through my long boxes and just... This one's 261. I don't know. <clears throat> All right. Here we go. Nice. Starting off, market report for April 17th, starting off with some interesting, some interesting stuff. How about a 1930s Tijuana Bible comic with Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. Do you guys know the story of the Tijuana Bible? Mm -mm. So the Tijuana Bible is like a, it's it's like what people are doing nowadays, like where they're stealing IP, but they're really naughty and dirty. And this one, and you could see it's you know just two staples and. You know, they'd print a bunch of them and they'd sell it, you know, at Tijuana, and Tijuana. You know, people would sell them for like 10 cents or whatever. And they call them Tijuana Bibles. And this from 1930s, Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck one sold for $450. I love all this stuff. I do too, bro. <laughs> I'm right there with you. I am right there I, with you. I finally managed to get one of those, uh, the good housekeeping with the, the first Donald Duck. Um, I just yeah, I just love all these old books from like 1930, 1934, all that stuff. These these all these Disney ones are they're amazing. But yeah. I never knew about this. It's cool. Um next we have Teen Titans 75, the Adam Hughes variant, the man hands cover. That is still a great cover. I love yeah. this. I've never owned one. Nine eight sold for fourteen hundred and twenty five bucks. Ghost Zapper says, that's my Teen Titans. I bought it on What Not Raw over a year ago. Nice. What was the uh, what was the flip on it? What would you buy it for? How much you put into it? Not bad. And then the Batman Grendel ash cans, a couple of them are so rare, and they, very, they rarely come up. Uh... And when they do, you see them sell for a lot. I think there's a purple one, too. I can't remember which one's the rarest. I know we did a deep dive on it back in Flipside in the day. But this is the silver one, sold for $799. Ghost Zapper said he bought it raw for $300 and sold it for $1425. Not bad, my friend. That's huge. That's a nice come up. All right, next. This... I wish I knew what happened here. Okay. This is crazy. Spider Man number one, the Walmart UPC variant, which is one of the, which to me is the rarest of them all, of all the Spider Man number ones, sold in a 9 8 for $2,000 with 42 bids. 
the rarest to me. It's more rare than the Platinum. It's the rarest Spider-Man number one. A 9-8 signature series, regular gold one, which they made a shit ton of, signed by Stan Lee and Todd McFarlane, sold for $28.50. Sold for $850 more. How? Why would Stan Lee sign that in, in, in silver? He didn't care. He wasn't signing it. Bro, it was you have McFarlane was, signing yeah. gold, you get Stan Lee to sign in gold? Like, bro, come on. It's a second print. What what are you talking about? It's a second print. The gold number one? There is no second print. The gold is already a second print, right? The silver was a second print. The gold UPC is the rare one. The gold one with just the Spider Man head isn't that rare. I mean, there's hundreds of them. That's yeah. You can walk into it. You can go, uh, not, not hundreds, hundreds of thousands of them, I imagine, of the gold and silvers. As a matter of fact, the newsstand polybag one is rare. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that's what I figured. The newsstand polybag is rarer to me than the silver and the gold. I mean, there's a there's a nine point six that just sold today for seventy two dollars. The <laughs> how did that <laughs> seventy two dollars Canadian? This had 56 bids on it too. So, like, they were people were fighting after it. The only thing uh, I could think of is somebody saw the, the newsy sell, and two, like, just like Wonder World says, two newbies looked at the first UPC for comps on what to pay and ran each other up. That's the only thing I could think of. Yeah. I, I do look, I do see it listed that way, though. Like, uh, like Brad is saying that it's the, it's a second print. People have it listed like that on. Yeah. It is a second eBay. print, yeah. Man. So, uh, we'll see if that shows back up. Somebody f says, no, nah, I'm not going to pay that. I didn't realize what it was. 9-8, uh, uh, Edge of Spider-Verse number two, the Greg Land variant, sold for $4,550. That's pretty good, right? It's coming back up? Yeah, yeah I feel like that's a, that's, a, that's a good price, yeah. It's a great price. Uh, next, we have the Scotty Young Deadpool number 45 Run the Jewels one in 50 and a 9 8 sold for 933 bucks. That's cool. Yeah. I was so pissed. I was so pissed this uh, Iron Man got away from me, dude. I, really? I should have just, just paid 500 Yeah. and took it home. Yeah. Dude, I was, I was with my friend that uh, he was in from out of town and he just came to my, my comic store with me you know and there was a they had like a box full of variants on discount and he just he just grabbed this thing out of there and he was like you, gotta be you know what this is and i was like what why would he talk about 10 bucks i was like i looked wow. it up later this was a few years ago but oh, okay i was like okay. what he was like yeah it's like a 500 dollars book bro know. this is a fucking ghost this is my favorite of the venomized books this Fuck is yeah, my this looks so much better than the mary jane one this is by far the best of the Venomized variants back in 2000, early 2000s. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking, man. Like, this is a book, like, I've been after since, like, 2016, dude, you know? Yeah. I should have just, like, I'm losing my edge, bro. We all are, man. Try doing yeah, a market report a couple of times a week. It'll drive yeah. you even cra more crazy. I'm getting old. <laughs> Here's See all the stuff you want. Yeah, he, that Invincible Iron Man is, is a tough book, though, man. Mm -hmm. Do we know who sold it? Was the same people that are always selling them? The Venom variants? Uh, I don't I have to check my eBay. Uh, so Walking Dead number 100, the famous uh, Red Foil Lucille variant, unsigned. Yeah, 9-4, sold for $359. I want one of those unsigned. So, speaking of unsigned, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, something is killing the children. Number six, the one in twenty-five prison spot foil variant uh, with this chainsaw. I love this cover. I've always loved this cover. Uh, nine eight sold for fourteen twenty-five. That's pretty healthy wow. for that book. It's probably down. Yeah. I get it, but still, that's pretty healthy. And then here you go, Hood. The my Sports Illustrated. 
uh, volume 59, number 23 from 1983, the first Jordan cover. A newsstand 70, CGC 70, sold for 1175 bucks. And it's a newsstand. I, pre I pressed uh, a, one of those that was like beautiful, Brian, last year, man. Really? Yeah. Oh. It came it came back uh, a nine four. The ghost no zapper no no label. The ghost zapper says that's my something is killing the children as well. I paid five dollars for it when it came out. Score. <laughs> nice oh, yeah. flips, brother. Good Sick. job. Yeah. Yeah. And then a vintage nineteen sixty six vinyl Batman wallet. Never opened. Sold for nine hundred and eighty seven. Nine hundred and eighty eight dollars. How cool is that, dude? I'm telling you, bro. Bro, god damn it, dude. All right. That's badass, dude. Yeah. That's I'm pretty surprised by that sale, but that is cool. God, that went cheap, didn't it? Yeah. Wow, man. I mean, that's like you're getting to like one of a kind still in the original package. Like, come on, man. Yeah, that's gotta be tough. Mm. Yep. All right, next. This blows me away. Marvel team up number 14, the Spider-Man meets Invincible issue when Kirkman was, this is when, how he got into Marvel by doing these volume four Marvel team up stuff. And he asked if he could bring Invincible in for one of the, I think the last uh, issue of the series. But this is a, you can find this book in back issue bins. Dude, I, I, I know I have like five or six of those somewhere, dude. A 9.6 hood sold for $920 oh. on 58 bids. That's why I'm going through all my shit, dude. Like, I'm seeing all this crap, so, you know. Oh. Um, speaking of unsigned, hard-to-find stuff, this blows me away, too. This is probably the sell of the week to me. A spawn number 350. The McFarlane retailer thank you cover that just came out, a nine eight unsigned uh, variant of that because they remember they were all signed. Yeah, sold for four thousand three hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> How was there any that was not signed? That's crazy. They were comp <laughs> copies. Yeah, that's nuts. Billy had one of these, I think. I think Billy from Economics and Comics. Oh, we did. Graded had one graded too. I think. Wow. Yeah. So hopefully that was his sale. Uh, yeah. Oh, look at this. Ghost Zapper says, I bought that spawn for $600 unsigned. You posted it the other day, and it's a nine-day. <laughs> Man, this ain't the market report. It's the Ghost Zapper report. <laughs> Ghost Zapper report. Yeah, he's winning. Oh, bro. Nice job. Bro. Oh, that was Clutch's sale. Okay, so the 9-8 unsigned was Clutch's sale. Wow. Shout out to Big Clutch. Ghost Zapper says he he posted the one that I saw that sold because one of the unsigned ones sold for nine hundred or six hundred dollars raw the other day, and it was Ghost Zapper that bought it, and now he's gonna flip okay. it for thousands. <laughs> uh, New Gods number seven, first appearance of Steppenwolf, origin of Mister Miracle and Orion in a nine eight. Sold for three thousand two hundred and twenty-five dollars. That's kind of wild. Looking at the unsigned retailer thank you cover next to this new gods, isn't it? Five point eight. Which one would you rather have? You oh. know, like that's crazy. Oh, yeah. we did a show like that a long time ago. <laughs> yes, yeah. you did. Yes, you did. All right, moving on. Another spawn, uh, tough spawn book. Spawn one eighty nine. The uh, sketch variant. Wow. A 9.8 sold for $4,427. Man, so good. Look at yeah. that. Yeah. And then a Wonder Woman 38, the Finch 1 in 100 variant signed by David Finch in a 9.8 signature series yellow label sold for eight fifty. And I feel like whoever got that, congrats on that one. Yeah. That's a great buy. And then these Dave Steven book that still just continues to blow me away is the the uh the space vixens covers are just selling for crazy money here's the 3d zone number 16 the space vixens cover sold in a 98 for 1900 dollars. just 
blows me away, man. All right, yeah. next. Transformers All Hell Megatron number one, the Killing Joke variant. One of the toughest books to find out there. Sold for $480 raw. That is a tough book. Yeah. Another super tough book, and I wish there's a couple of books that I wish I would have seen. Uh, I would have bought X Men volume uh, the X Men number eleven, the Pressman second printing silver variant, and a CGC nine six sold for three fifty. That's Crazy. a great book. Yeah. And then this is kind of cool. Superman number 100, The Death of Clark Kent, signed by Jerry Siegel. And a perfect signature placement right at the top in silver. Oh, that is nice. Yeah. Sold for six, 560 bucks. Wow. Yeah. That's, a, that's nice to have, man. Yeah. Yep. Next. Daredevil number one eleven, the gorgeous variant of Lady Bullseye, sold in a nine eight for five hundred and sixteen bucks. Tough book. Yeah, I remember this book going for like over a grand, dude. Yeah, tough book. Still phenomenal cover. Yep. And then some rare toy stuff to show you guys: two food fighter figures. I just think it's funny to see a cherry donut and a scoop of orange <laughs> sherbet holding guns. So these sold where were these lose. from? I remember these vaguely. Did yeah, you guys remember where this was? Toys in the eighties, bro. Oh, it was just a it was just a line, right? Yeah, line toy, toys. Yeah, they were called food fighters. Yeah. Oh, two hundred and three dollars, two hundred and two dollars for them. Loose crazy that's crazy next this is nuts all right these are some crazy things here first a 1989 gi joe night force scrambler you guys remember the night force stuff especially the vehicles are super rare you have the night force uh sky striker you have the night force hydrofoil or the moray you have the night force hydrofoil you have the night force this one i mean you have the uh shark night force they're all worth a ton of money and it was so funny that they had a night force called a thing called night force with fluorescent orange accents i always thought that was funny anyways this one is the scrambler but it's missing the seat belts and if you guys were watching uh the saturday night show Dennis during pickups was giving a master class on how important it is to find those junk piles of of parts and weapons parts this sold for 401 dollars but no seat belts if the seat belts were there it would have sold for probably a shit ton more and you just go find those seat belts you know what i mean good luck go find them so <laughs> and then this is the craziest one we've talked about this on the show before i didn't know about it until the first time i saw it sold this is a rare masters of the universe battle cat they did two different painting variants of them, and this one with the striped tail sells for sixteen hundred and twenty-five dollars loose. Wow! Yeah, dude, super super rare. And then I don't even know what these are. Please, somebody tell me. Forty-eight bids, eighteen hundred and fifteen dollars. A keto limited edition collector auction. Stormstrike and Lord Shifta, and they look like little like. Pokemon toys or whatever, eighteen hundred and fifty dollars on forty eight bids. So that one's weird. I never heard of that. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Um. All right. This is super cool. This is the sh uh, store shelf tag that they would put on the toy shelf for Muscle Men. Just the tag for the shelf. Sold for a thousand and twenty-five dollars. What Man, nostalgia of a crazy drug, <laughs> right? It is fucking crazy, dude. Yeah, and then this is super cool to me. I love learning the history of toys. I need to. We need to get a super uh, transformer historian on because 
this guy sold a bunch of these diaclone figures and i'm guessing the diaclone stuff was the first transformers that's what they were called at first right diaclone yeah yeah yep yep i believe so they they were made by takara i've been looking for some of this stuff it, i think they came out like a year prior to the u.s release yeah and they didn't have like the the trend well i don't even know because this one has the this one looks like some bootleg shit. What is this transformer? <laughs> what the fuck is this? Right? What is <laughs> this transformer? Yeah, rare diaclone, four wheel drive, Hilux blue tailbreaker, vintage Takara transformers. This sold for a thousand and forty dollars. This guy sold like five know, other dude. of them. This one, I might need to sp- like check this one. I don't because I've looked at some of the Takara stuff from '84, and it 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 says it looks like. You know the transformers we got, but it it does not say transformers on. Yeah, it. I don't know what this is. Yes, yeah, but crazy. this could be something maybe from a a different country. Um, I don't know where this is from. I don't know what this is. Yeah, transformer. It's weird, dude. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just yeah I don't know what this is because I I do know because I have been looking at like the 1984 ones like on japanese yahoo auctions and stuff i don't know what this is and it would have been written in japanese so i don't know what it is wow well we'll have to talk to dennis about these two because i know he's really into transformers too uh this one's cool the original savage he-man masters of the universe 1981 mattel complete what is this the original savage he-man this looks like the bread version the Wonder Bread version, but I don't know if it is. It sold for eleven hundred and seventy-six dollars on twelve bids. Dude, I think it is, and they just mislabeled it. Right, bro? Is that the Wonder the the bread? Yeah, the it bread? looks like it to me. You pull He's up, just missing pull up, his uh, chest piece. I bet you that it is, dude. What is that? What does that He Man go for? The Wonder Bread? Is it Wonder Bread? Um, yeah, let me see here. Hold on here. Speaking uh, of Wonder Bread, man, when I was in Houston with Nate. We took an Uber, and the Uber driver goes, so what do you guys do? And he goes, have you heard of Wonder Bread? And the guy goes, yeah. He goes, that's my grandfather's company. He built it from the ground up. He goes, oh, wow, no shit. So so where do you guys want to go? I'll take you anywhere you want to go. <laughs> and I just like, I looked at Nate, and I go, he does have a lot of AFA graded figures. Like, <laughs> That's exactly what this is, Hood. I go, Nate, you're my best friend. <laughs> That's what this is, Hood. It is, right? I yeah. knew it, dude. Yeah. Yeah, Den- Dennis is talking about the the Transformer. So I'm I'm reading about it. Actually, that this listing was relisted, but um it is it was exclusively released in Italy. So it's Oh, so Diaclones are yeah. Transformers from Italy. No, 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 no. Uh, it it was lice- it was a Japanese uh transformer but it was licensed in italy and released this way oh okay so yeah wow that's crazy and then we have the very first rolling stone volume one that's number it? one yep sold for 247 bucks you guys somebody missed out on that one wow yeah, Man, you could press it. You could press that newspaper, also, bro. Yep. Yep. And then this one's crazy. I Blades of Steel is one of my all-time favorite games. Here's a Blades of Steel, a five-screw air variant cart, sold for six thousand three hundred and twenty-two dollars. These guys don't fuck around, dude. <laughs> Dude, they want their games, dude. Yeah. Like, bro. And then um, the Mortal Kombat 2 official magazines, one through four, all bagged and sealed, sold for 200 bucks. So that's that's pretty crazy. Then we have some uh, interesting stuff. How about this? Sex Pistols. Original Jamie Reed God Save the Queen print from 1977, you guys. Look at this. Oh, wow. Out of 750, it sold for only $740, you guys. 
Somebody snapped it, just snatched it up immediately. Next. I don't know if you guys remember me talking about this, but every once in a while you'll see somebody's YouTube play button show up for sale on eBay. Now, YouTube gives uh, YouTubers awards for uh, subscribers. So if you get to like 100,000 subscribers, you get a silver play button. If you get to a million, you get the gold. If you get to 25 million, you get a diamond. This is Sam Smith's diamond play button. And it sold for sixteen hundred dollars. You guys, <laughs> ten million subscribers. How did that happen? Sam Smith not, must not have cared about it so much. And somebody said, "Hey, can I have that?" And he said, "Sure." Or it could have been stolen. Or it could have been stolen. Uh, Keemstar bought PewDiePie's diamond play button because he has a. I wonder if Keemstar bought this because Keemstar has a museum he's making for YouTube and content museum and he buys people's play buttons for that museum dude when i was i was uh i was interning for teddy riley before i started working with him like officially as a oh lawyer. the teddy riley yeah the teddy riley bro and inside the file cabinets in the back room like in of the studio i just he had me doing something sorting just something i opened up with the cabinets it has sheet music for remember the time and some other song from the dangerous album signed by michael jackson oh, just wow. literally sitting in the file cabinet and this stuff got lost in storage like a, like it was the worst but wow. i just think about it like stuff like this it it might just be put away you never know like really what happened storage unit yeah stuff. Yeah, rump shaker Teddy Riley. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> rump shaker. Yeah. 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 All right, um, here we go. So yeah, this this stuff. And then, you know, people people like Sam Smith, they're getting awards all the time. You know yep. what I mean? So it's probably didn't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming so. from England, so yeah. all right, Would next. You send these off to get graded. Uh is that Momoko? Yeah. What are they? Are they variants? Amparilla, virgin, virgin. Maybe, variant. maybe. Uh, this is cool. I need to learn more about this. NME leader of the pack playing cards, diamond suit sealed, new musical express. It sold for one hundred and fifty eight dollars, and they're cards. But it's got the Kurt Cobain. I don't know what these are for fans of Kurt Cobain and other featured rock stars. Or for collectors of music memorabilia, this diamond suit of enemy playing cards is a must-have. Um, I have three other suits listed. I don't know. Like, are these considered like some of these rookie cards of certain people or what? But sold for one hundred and fifty-eight bucks for this set. Were, yeah, these these came with a magazine, right? Didn't, yeah. Wasn't there a magazine called NME? Yeah. Yep. And then next we've got speaking of Nirvana. Four full tickets from and one including the canceled 31st of March 1994 when mm -hmm. Kurt went into rehab when he was in Paris wow. and stuff. 317 bucks. Wow, that's, See, that's awesome. what happens when you stop looking through for tickets and stuff, dude. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I know, I, I, I feel you because I, I have all these safe searches and eventually I was like. I'm yeah. buying too much shit, and I stopped looking, and I, God knows what I've missed in the meantime, in the process. This is an old school punk magazine cover. This is the original cover by John Holmstrand of Punk Magazine. Uh, the artist proof. Yeah, wow. the artist proof, yeah. A Ramones Mac cover he did. Sold for 318 bucks. Here's the back. Oh, and that's what it, what it sent in. This is... Oh, man, this is so cool, you guys. So when I got back into... I would say I was probably like... It was one of the first things I did when I got clean. So I was probably like 25 or 26. And I started getting back into cards. And one of the first things that pulled me back into cards was the old school wrestling cards. Now, you guys are thinking like, 
what are old school wrestling cards? I'm not talking about like WWF cards or WCW cards. I'm talking about the old school wrestling cards that are, you know, Hulk Hogan's rookie and onto the Giants rookie. And they're from like the 70s. And the yeah, only like time, the AWA. AWA, yeah. You can only get these in magazines. And this is one of the magazines. Wrestling annual for 1973 includes cards. Oh, shit. Yeah, awesome. 36 wallet size photos of your favorite stars. And people cut those that will cut these out and call these rookies too. So, oh, it doesn't show the cards. No. You would get those rookie cards from those, um, from these magazines. They you would send in a thing and they would send them to you in these little sets and they would be um wrapped in plastic and i've seen people have sets of them they're crazy man they're rare so crazy yep next i don't know what this is but it's crazy it sold for a thousand and two hundred and fifty bucks skunk works cutting floor portfolio by jim hardeman furry art from 1997 so here's all your furry, all you furries out there. Skunk Works. No, not the cool Skunk Works. Not the one that has alien technology chilling on base. Furry Skunk Works. Look at that. There we go. Sold for <laughs> 1250 bucks. Next. This is super cool. Look at this cover hood. One of the cool things that I've heard people collect are the witch riding a broom covers, right? Mm. Yeah. This is startling stories from March 1950. It's a pulp. Sold for $365. Look at that cover. It's yeah, pretty cool. Pulps are starting to up. Yeah, pulps are starting to go crazy, man. It's starting. They've been doing it for a while. This yeah. is a killer cover that I wish I would have bought. It's a nine six Strange Tales number seven. It sold for four hundred and thirty five bucks. Look at that cover. It's what, sick. What year is that? Uh, nineteen fifth. Is it? Uh, no, date. no date. No what? date. Hold on. Is here. that a 19, reprint? Nineteen hundred. What? Get the hell out of here. <laughs> I think it's a reprint. I don't know what, but I got to find out more about mm. this. $435. Strange Tales number seven, the World Ender comic. Let's see. Hmm. Lord Huron, the World Ender. Yeah, look at this. Here we go. This book was given away for free when purchasing Lord Huron's Strange Tales at participating record stores in 2015. Although there is no count how many comic books were printed, it has become a rarity. The cover of the comic book has number seven, even though there was only one comic in the series. The number seven <laughs> refers to the song The World Ender being the seventh track off Strange Tales. Wow, that is cool. That's pretty cool. That's really cool. Right? Yeah. I would have never thought that. That is just a cool cover, and it's a 9-6. It looks great. Oh, slap, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Strange Trails. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, next. Elephant Man number 32, the J. Scott Campbell one in 15, and a 9-8 sold for $990. Tough book. Tough, tough book. Wow. Yeah, it's a wraparound, too. I love Elf the Elephant Men series. Uh, this is the type of stuff that I think is going to blow up online and, or just people are going to start collecting it. This is a Michael Turner Soulfire preview. It's the like special Pittsburgh Comic Con it, it, it con yeah. convention one. But stuff like this by Turner, some of this rare stuff, is going to go crazy at some point. I agree. 
nine six sold for three ninety. They had a couple of his uh, sketchbooks from uh, the two thousand four Comic Con, and they wanted like seventy seventy five bucks at the half price books, and I was like, ah. "Wow!" I mean, yeah, I'm debating whether to go and buy him. How about a original sketch of the Cheshire Cat from Scotty Young? Oh, that's cool, <laughs> right? Yeah. So for three hundred sixty-eight bucks. Wow. Next, this is really cool. Speaking of sketch books, hood, Adam Hughes oh. eight signed and uh, signed sketchbooks. You gotta you know, be kidding, dude. Four hundred fifty-five bucks, bro. Oh my dude. god. Eight of them, bro. The deals are out there, you guys. You just gotta. Oh my god! You gotta look for them. You gotta be ready. Yeah. What a steal, bro! How about this one? Bruce Tim sketchbooks, both signed from 2003 and 2006, sold for 350. Mm. Wow. Yeah, dude. Look at the back. Oh, wow. That is cool. Mm. Classic. Yep. <laughs> Next. This is super cool. A Walt Kelly Pogo original art, it looks like. Sold for $357. I think this is original art. If it is, for only $357, that's a pretty cool piece of art to have. Yeah. Seems like a great price. Yep. Walt Kelly. Speaking of original art, you guys won't understand this, but all any of the people in the uh, chat uh, that are CG people will understand this. This is a guy that's on YouTube. This is a master class in monetizing your haters, you guys. This is another YouTuber that doesn't like the CG guys and constantly makes fun of them. So Ethan did a sketch card of them and sold it on eBay. The guy that won it on eBay is going to start making merchandise with it, coffee mugs, uh, stickers, and start selling them. And that is how you monetize your haters, you guys. Holy shit. Moving on. Speaking of original art that is amazing, speaking of CG guys, the one, the only, Dale Keown. This is wow. Incredible Hulk 397, the last spat, splash page. It sold for 4000 just under $4,000. $3,900, you guys, for a piece uh, of Dale Keown. Three, this is Hulk art, 397 Look at this. That's crazy. Wow. That's awesome. Oh, my God. Look at that. Dale Keown was so good, dude. He Crazy. still is, bro. He still is. is, he still doing is yeah, he still like... he's back. He's uh, he's he's he um, he streams with Ethan and all those guys. He just started. Oh, does he really? Yeah, it's really what? cool. Yeah, Billy Tucci. Um, yeah, I guess they're they're they've been trying to do a pit omnibus for a while now, and it keeps falling through. He keeps getting screwed over by people, but that'll eventually happen. And he's doing new covers also for his friends over there. But look at that, dude. That is amazing art. Just beautiful page. That is just so gorgeous. Wow. Yeah. $3,900. Another gorgeous piece of original art. This is John Hebink. It's from 1993 Elvira. It's the first page. Look at this. I mean... That, what a great that, I mean doesn't that look a little like Dave Stevens? It does. <laughs> look at this art. It's all that is really good, man. Yeah. You know, you know what it looks like? It looks like uh early art Adams, dude. It's good. And Elvira mm -hmm. fans something Elvira fans are gonna be super excited for that. Look at this. Gangsters Can't Win number two from 1948. A 3.5 sold for $10,000. Hey, let me tell you, Copper, you see? Yeah, see? Look at, that. Look at that cover, dude. 
bro, he's punching the chick, dude. Right? <laughs> That's crazy. Bro, what do you think she said? No. I mean, he's got a gun, but he punches her. Like, mm. it's like, shouldn't the gun, like, be enough? Right? I'm sorry, sis, but you should have screamed. If I weren't a gentleman, I would shoot you. Oh, so he, so it was nice that he punched her. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow, this is awesome. What a great skull cover. <laughs> Ten grand. He's gangster, bro. Yeah. And then there's another thing I love to talk about. The, the days of buying artist prints are long over. They do just covers now, and you just buy their covers. But Alex Ross always sold these beautiful G clays or G clays. Is that how you say it? G clay? G clay? G clay? Mm -hmm. And yeah, they're just beautiful pieces of art on just high, high quality canvas. And this is the Joker's Reckoning. It's limited to 100, and it was less than 600 bucks, you guys. I mean, beautiful. This is the type of art that I wish more artists would do. I have uh, two really nice Alex Ross G. Cleys. I have the um, one of the uh, him where he's dancing with Harley, the original, and then the uh, Uncle Sam where he's flipping off the bird. But this is gorgeous. And this sold for yeah five hundred sixty eight bucks. Mighty Marvel value stamp book from 1974 with all stamps sold for $329, you guys. <laughs> Think of oh. all the books that they fucked up to get those stamps. Look yeah. at this. I got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Only to, for it to be worth $327. They're all there, too. <laughs> this is so cool. It is cool. Though, Where's yeah. Shaun of the She-Devil? You know that one cost a Hulk 181. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, buy it so he could put it back into the book. Yeah. <laughs> right? No, stamp taped back to the original page does not affect story. Yeah. Yeah. Green label. Yeah. Nine nine point nine. <laughs> this is the book that I wish I would have bought the most out of everything that we've seen today and I missed out on I missed out on a one five shock suspense stories number twelve the classic uh heroin cover and I'm really bummed I missed out on this. It was only two hundred and ninety two dollars. Like, uh, one of the books that I was pressing this morning. Look at that. I mean for a one five it looks great. It's got a stamp a date stamp on it. I mean that right I, there. I, oh, that's just. If anybody's ever dealt with um, being dope sick, this isn't just cheesy 1940s art to you. Like you feel this pain right here, and for some reason, this is cool to me now that I'm older, and I'm just like, I know you know what that is going through right there, right and. There's something about gallows humor and dark humor that make me want to collect these things. And I don't know what it is, but it's really weird. But for a 1-5, for 300 bucks for that book is crazy. Oh, yeah. And then finally, yeah. a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one, first print, 8-0 restored sold for seven grand wow what did it get restored for restoration includes small amount of color touch on cover can that be removed uh, yeah. yeah man i would buy this and just remove it <laughs> right it'll take it down to probably like a five doesn't matter yeah i i hear you how many people are going to start buying green labels and Oh, the qualified? Yeah. A lot? Yeah. Man. Especially if it's a legit, and you know it's a legit auto. That is the market report. 
Nice. Yeah. That's crazy. I gotta stuff. go. I All gotta right. go. Good stuff. I'm gonna uh we're almost done, you guys. I'm just gonna open up this uh PSA and then we're gonna call it a night. So Hood, I uh I'll talk oh, to you let later. Me, let me see. I'll stay on for a little bit. Let me see some of the cards you got. All right, you ready? Yeah. <clears throat> let me get this set up here real quick. I'm gonna add another Bro. <laughs> <laughs> The Vinny oh. saga continues. No, but I only found a few. Somebody, somebody left a few, but they did were. You, did you pull anything good? I haven't opened them. I just got oh, okay. seven, seven packs. I, you know, I, I saw the story you did about all the packs you opened, and like I haven't bought a pack since of anything. I oh, know, yeah, right? The I will say though that I've been watching the YouTube videos. The megas seem to have better stuff because each one, each pack has like two. Of the red or the pink prisms, depending on where you got them from. So I actually Bro, hit a one you, like first. I got three boxes and hit one in the first box on that. So, bro, Wendy is doing shit that nobody's ever done before, bro. That's you kind know, of why I'm not mad at you know, that's kind of why I keep buying stuff. I'm like, I don't feel bad about it and, it, and I'm kind of having fun. So, fuck it, bro. It's just unreal. And, and, bro, they're going to be a playoff team next year, man. We're about an hour and fifteen minutes away from here. I'm I'm gonna be back. I'm gonna be back in the saddle over there, bro. <laughs> All right, Brian. I'm gonna hang for a few minutes too. I gotta. Get, All right, sounds get good, brother. Here yep, too, sounds but, good. Yeah. Just right. throw them all out on the table, bro. <laughs> so here's the box, you guys. Like every card's a ten, dude. You know what I mean, dude. Hopefully, it's nuts. Bro, we saw the grades. You saw them. I didn't. Holy cow! Oh, oh my god! Oh, bro, it's oh. like ten, 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 ten. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's see what we get, baby. This is an 82 card PSA submission, you guys. Oh, look at that. It was supposed to be, uh, I had 140 cards that I was sending in, that I had planned to send in. And I went through all 140 of them. And um, I. I, after going through 140 of them, looking at them, you know, under a magnifying glass and checking them and checking, you know, seeing if there was any scratches, I only had 82 that worked. Oh, look at that. The big, beautiful PSA. Oh, look at this. Look how nice that looks. Look how nice that looks. All right, here we go. You guys ready? I'm, I'm jealous. All right. We got a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff in here. All right. Starting it off. All right, here we Don't go. Don't cover up the label. Like, what do you think I got? <laughs> All right, this is a Julio Rodriguez first Bowman, and I think it's a Mojo. We'll check. Oh, look at that. PSA 10. Mojo Julio. Mojo! Oh, all right. This is This could be a banger, you guys. But I don't think it will be. I I thought this one was probably going to be an eight or a nine. If it was, if it's a ten, it'll be a huge hit. But I don't think it's going to be a ten. This is a Bobby Witt Jr. Gold paper first Bowman. Ooh, that's okay. I'll take it. PSA nine. PSA nine. Okay, I thought that was a 10. Yeah, I wish. This one has a little bit of a white corner on the bottom left corner. Let's see if I can... I can't really show it right now, but yeah, on the bottom left corner, that just has a little bit of a white corner. So that came back a 9. I thought it would be a 9 or an 8. All right, let me let me figure this out here. Hold on here. These things are packed in tight. All right, here we go. Grab a stack here. All right, here we go. Uh, Noelve Marte. This is a 
Ooh, this is a Bowman Mega first Bowman Noelve Marte number to two fifty Mojo. It came back at ten. Love it. Yeah. Next, we have a Ronald Acuna Tops Chrome. Now, this is either a regular base or a refractor rookie. Ooh, PSA 9. So I'll crack that one out, most likely, and resend it. That's a Tops Chrome rookie, PSA 9. Acuna. Another Acuna. Ooh, boom, 10. PSA 10 rookie, Tops Chrome. All these are going to be for sale. Here is a Shohei Otani uh, 2018 MVP Mojo Bowman. I, I don't think it's going to gem, but we'll see. Yeah, Mint 9. Beautiful card, though. Yeah, it looks nice. Yeah. Next, we've got a Shohei Otani uh, Bowman rookie. Mint 9. That's a bummer. I'll probably recrack that and sell and send it back. I'm probably gonna um, crack and send most of the nines. All right, here's another Ronald Acuna Jr. Tops Chrome rookie PSA 10. It's nice. Okay, let's continue. Another Ronald Acuna Jr. Bowman. This is a Bowman Chrome prospect numbered to 250 Mojo. PSA 9. That's a bummer. But still a 9. All right. Noelve Marte. This is another number to 250 PSA 10 Mojo. That's nice. Jim Mint. Shohei Otani. Legends in the Making Rookie Blue. This is the blue uh, colored paper. PSA 10. Nice. Look at that. That's nice. Shohei Otani. Ooh, this is an artist proof. PSA 10 rookie artist proof gallery. PSA 10. Another Shohei Otani. This is Gypsy Queen rookie. Nice. PSA 10. And then and this is a Julio Rodriguez Bowman Sapphire rookie short print number to 25, I think. Let me check. Boom. Short print orange variation number to 75 rookie. Man, what an awesome card. Dude. Yeah. Beautiful. It's a, it's a variation too. All right. Let's continue here. Put these back. I gotta put these in uh, some of those protector bag things. All right, continuing a Shohei Otani Tops Chrome rookie, PSA ten. Nice Ooh. for sale. All right, now we got another Shohei Otani. This is a eighty-three Tops refractor. I want that. Come on. Here we go. PSA 10. God. Look at that. Beautiful. Claim. <laughs> All right. Hold on. We got more. Bobby Witt Jr. This is the Bowman Chrome Mega First Bowman. PSA 10. Nice. Mm. You're on mute, Vinny. Uh, Noel V. Marte. Mojo. Oh, this is a speckle PSA 10. Uh, I was going to say that was my, the, the 2020 was my big year of uh, the Bowman mega boxes. You have to so go through got, them, bro. I got, I got them all. I mean, I have like a bunch of the Bobby Witt mojos. And the, yeah, we got to go through them. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Mm. Shohei Otani rookie freshman flash PSA 10. That's beautiful. Uh, another Julio Rodriguez. This is a PSA 10 first Bowman Mojo. Here you go. Here's another one. You probably yep. might have some. That's a good one. And then 
Another, this is a pin, PSA 9, that's a bummer, Mojo of uh, Bobby Witt. I'll probably crack that and send it. Um, all right, here we go. We're only, we're not even close. All right, here's another, oh, look at that. Oh, it's a PSA 8, that hurts. Uh, Sapphire, PSA 8. Oh, that hurts. Oh, well. You got to resend that one. Yeah. yeah. All right, here's a Corbin Carroll Topps Chrome Rookie Auto. Come on, one time. Yes, PSA 10. Nice. I love the white border on those. All right, next. All right. Are you guys, hopefully everybody's seeing this that's watching. Let me make sure that. Uh... Let me make sure you guys can see all of my 10s. Yeah. <laughs> all right, there we go. All right, here's this Mike Trout number to 25. I think it's an orange all-star game. Tops Chrome. All right, number 25, Mike Trout. Here we go. Boom, PSA 10. Nice. Look at that. That's a nice card. All right, here's a Nolan Arenado rookie. I just threw this in because it looked centered. I don't expect it to 10 to update Tops, Tops rookie from 2013. Nolan Arenado. Oh, nice. PSA 10. There we go. It's just a great. Oh, here's a great card. I really, really hope this tends. This is one of the bigger cards that could be a monster. So out of the 2019 Prism class, which had Zion, Jean Morant, Colby White, Jordan Poole, uh, all those great rookies, they've all shit the bed except for one. And this guy wasn't even supposed to be that great. Darius Garland of Cleveland. And I sent in some Darius Garland rookies. And this one is numbered to 35. Prism Pulsar Purple, numbered to 35. These are rare. One time. Here we go. Fuck yeah. PSA 10. Nice. Yep. Nice. That'll be a big sale. This one's another cool one. This is all about color match. Mac McClung, he doesn't, I don't even think he has any regular rookie cards. Won the dunk contest twice the last two years. This is a color match from Panini Prism Draft. He went to Texas Tech. Yep. Come on, one time. Boom, PSA 10. Nice. Cracked ice, orange ice prism. So that'll be a cool, cool sale, hopefully. All right, this is a Vladdy Jr. Mojo Auto that I pulled from the pack. I had I pulled three of these and only one did not have horrendous scratching. I pulled a number to twenty five. It has horrendous scratching. I pulled a number to ninety nine. Has horrendous scratching. This is the only one that didn't. One time. Shit, it's a nine. I'll I'll send that back though. That's a beautiful card. Vladdy Junior. What are you gonna send them to to regrade? How do you do I'll, that? I'll, I'll I'll crack them. I'll crack them out just like you crack out a, a comic. Oh yeah. All right. This this stack at the end of this stack, you guys, is the biggest card in the bunch. And if it grades a ten, it could it's a ten thousand dollar card. So all right, here we go. Another Otani. This one's a mint nine eighty three. Wow. That's a pretty Sick. card, man. Ooh, nice. Fernando Tati Sepia Refractor, Tops Chrome Sepia Refractor, PSA ten. Nice. Yeah. Oh, this one hurts. I'm going to crack this one and send this one back. This is a Corbin Carroll purple color match number to 250 rookie. So I'll probably send that back. It came back at nine. All right, next we have a PSA 9 Mike Trout uh, Sterling number to 150. Oh, this one hurts. I'm going to send this one back. This is a Darius Garland Silver Prism Rookie, PSA 9. This one, ooh, that's a good one. Junior Camaro, first Bowman uh, Mega, Mojo Mega Auto, PSA 10. All right, this next one, Austin Riley, Chrome Refractor, first Bowman. Oh, that hurts. That's a beautiful card, too, PSA 9. I'll send that one back. Shohei Otani, 84 Tops Chrome mm. design, PSA 10. That's nice. 
Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Man. Yeah. All right, here it is, you guys. This is the card right here. <laughs> Nathan McKinnon, SP Authentic Rookie Auto. Son of a bitch! Damn it. Damn. PSA 9. I'm going to crack Ugh. this fucker and send it back. Oh, I'm going to keep sending that one until it grades, man. <laughs> that was a redemption, and it is gorgeous. So that one will be sent back. All right, here we go. We got more, you guys. We've got, ooh, another Sepia uh, Tatis rookie. PSA 10. All right, next. Six. Ooh, another. Oh, this is a nine. We'll have to send this one back. Pink Tatis Jr. Topps Chrome Refractor. PSA 9. Ooh, this one hurts. An 8 Bobby Witt Mojo first Bowman. Another 10 on the Sepia. I sent in three Sepia uh, Tatis, and they all came back 10s. There should be a silver in here of Tatis, too. Oh, another uh, Shohei Otani rookie, Gem Mint 10, Topps Chrome. All right, we got it here. Next, we've got. Ooh, another Shoei Tani. This is a nine. This is a purple speckle refractor from 2022. If you guys know what I'm talking about, I talk about color and refractors. So you see a lot of these are colors, uh, color matches, and that's what I sent in. This I send in the second year in the colored Akunas because they'll sell, you know, if you pull them out of packs and they're good condition. This is a nine. It's a pink Topps Chrome a Rookie Cup, so second year. Here's a, another same same card, PSA 9. I'll send these. I'll crack these probably. Oh, this is a good one. This is a Royce Lewis uh, for the Minnesota Twins, a Topps Chrome 2022 Rookie Purple Speckle Refractor Auto Gem Mint 10, and it's a color match to the Twins. So that's a good card. Oh. Man, that could have been beautiful. Yeah, Akuna 2022 Bowman Chrome Sapphire numbered to 50. Oh, that's a beautiful card. There's another Austin Riley. This time, instead of his first Bowman, this is his rookie. It's a numbered green uh, to 99 green Bowman Chrome rookie, PSA 10. Another uh, show high. This is his pink rookie cup. Uh, Refractor number Gem Mint 10. That's a good one. And then finally, in this box, another Gem Mint 10 Show High rookie. Wow. Wow. All right. So, what's up with you and Show High? Do you like you have the best luck with the Otanis? Do you? No, bro. I wish I would have uh, uh, bought more of it <laughs> back then. You know what I mean? All right. So, like Vinny, that. Vinny. I Vinny still knows. can't believe Vinny. Is that how y'all first met? Or yep. yep. Because of that exactly. card? Yep. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Mm. All right. Yeah. If, if that happened to me, you better be my friend, Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is. At least, at least fake it. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, what's going on, Joe? Dude, Brian was so cool about it, man. He like. He like packed it up so carefully, like sent it out. He was he was he was such a good like he was like just so awesome. 50, I, I want to put like I think I put like thirty thousand dollars in insurance on it or something because Yeah, uh, something like that, man. Yeah. And then I was like, Yeah. I was really thankful, man. I was, I was that was awesome. That was this is so pretty cool. cool. This is the twenty nineteen Panini Prism basketball first year LeBron was a Laker, and this is a patch. So that's a good looking card, man. PSA nice. 10, yeah. That is a good card. Here's a Mike Trout. Oh, this one hurts. It's a PSA 8 relic. I don't know why this graded so low. That hurts. Here's another relic. This is pretty cool. This is a Cal Ripken Jr. bat piece, PSA 10 from 87 tops. Oh, come cool. on. One time. Hell yeah. Lamar Jackson, Donruss Optic, Pink, Rookie. Gem Mint 10. 
Here's another Gem Mint 10. Uh, Pete Alonzo, Pink Refractor Rookie. Ooh, this is a nice one. I pulled this one recently. 2023 Bowman's Best, Ethan Salas, Shellacked Lava, numbered to 50, Gem Mint 10. This is a beautiful... When I talk about color matches... Oh, yeah, and it Gem too. This is one of the most beautiful color matches. This is a Pink Pulsar, Kelly Oubre, Jr., Panini Prism when he played for the Suns. And it's the purple pulsar, not pink, purple pulsar. Look how beautiful this color match is. I mean, if I can get it to focus, it is just absolutely gorgeous. There we go. Beautiful. Orange on the bottom, purple on the sides. And it's numbered to 35. Very, very rare card. Oh, this is a cool one. Here's another color match. This is a Lamello Ball Pink Chronicles Honors. Gem Mint 10 cool. rookie. Here's another one of those Pulsars. Oh, I wish it would have came back at 10. It said Dennis Marodman Pulsar, numbered to 35. This is uh, Gunnar, Nelson, Gunnar Henderson X-Fractor Gem Mint 10 rookie. Here's another one that came back a nine. Same, same card. All right, here we go. Last box. I'll run through this quickly. So we've done pretty good. I mean, most, most tens and nines, which is nice. That's what you want, right? You want yeah. most tens and nines. Ooh, that top one. Oh, that hurts. I'll, I'll resend this one, though. This is a Ja Morant Genesis. Case hit, Ja Morant Genesis. PSA 9 2020 Mosaic. This is beautiful. Oh, I'm so glad I hit on this. Ronald Acuna Jr. Refractor Rookie. Tops Chrome. PSA 10. Gorgeous. Julio Rodriguez, uh, Mojo, Mega Box, First Bowman, PSA 10. Oh, thank you. Aaron Judge, Purple Refractor Rookie, PSA 10 from Topps Chrome. That's a beaut. That's cool, yeah. That's cool. Here's another Julio Rodriguez, Mojo, PSA 10. Both of my Sapphire Bobby Witts came back eights, man. That hurts. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, I got to figure that out. All right. Ooh, yes. This is a Otani Refractor 10. Look at that. Here's another Otani 10 Freshman Flash Rookie Refractor. <laughs> Look at Hood over there. Yeah, I know. Oh, uh, this is an eight and nine. Aaron Judge, uh, 87 tops, silver pack rookie, PSA 9. I'll have to resend that one. Oh, beautiful. Oh, it's a 9. This is uh, the 2022 silver pack mojo refractor of Aaron Judge. When he broke the record, it's numbered 275. Here is the Tati silver refractor. Beautiful. PSA 10. Nice. Yeah. Gorgeous. Bobby Witt Jr., Mega Box First Bowman, Gem Mint 10. That's good. Uh, this one hurt. This one would have been really, really good. 2022 Topps Chrome Cal Rally, Seattle, C Seattle Mariners rookie, auto. It's the Seattle color match. PSA 9. Ooh, this is a good one. There's another great color match. Kyle Tucker, Bowman Chrome. Purple, number to 250, Refractor, Gem Mint 10. This one hurt. Number to 50, Francisco Alvarez, Mojo, second year. Ooh, nice. Sapphire, Jason Dominguez, Gem Mint 10. Awesome. Yeah. This one hurt. I really wanted this one, but it's not that big of a car, car a person, but it's such a beautiful card. Hunter Green, first Bowman. It's a green shimmer. Hunter Green, green shimmer. And it's uh, numbered to 99. Came back a 9. 
That's a cool card. Oh, nice. Another Darius Garland. This is the Red Ice Prism. Gem Mint 10. This one's good, too. Anthony Edwards, uh, Select Rookie, PSA 10. And this one I really wish would have 10. Final card. Julio Rodriguez, Bowman Chrome Sapphire Rookie, PSA 9. So there we go, you guys. 82 card PSA submission. I mean, you can't, you can't that's be. That's fantastic, Brian. Yeah, right? that's awesome, dude. Yeah, you can't be mad at that at all. Hell no, man. Yeah. So. Unless you're a snob, <laughs> you know, you get all these tens, <laughs> and then the nines are like, they screwed me. Well, you know, um, all these are going to be for sale, you guys. Some of the ones I'm going to have to crack and, and send back, and those will eventually be for sale. All these are going to be for sale. I'm going to be putting up the spots for the um, 2024 Top Series 1 Fat Pack break in the, in the Discord. I'm going to do that uh, either tonight or tomorrow. Um, I'll hit at everybody once it's up. There will be 108 spots. The packs will be three, what did I say? Three for 25, uh, five for 40, and 10 for 75, I think. And we're going to do whoever pulls the lowest numbered card. And I'm not talking about set number. I'm talking about you have to pull a numbered card. And whoever pulls the lowest left-hand number wins all the hits. And so there's only going to be one winner. So, you guys, you're taking a chance at this. But also, I know how to tell if there is a Ellie De La Cruz or a um, Evan Carter rookie by looking at the back card. And I, anybody who gets one of those packs, you know, I'll just pull that the packs randomly out of the box, and you have one of those packs, I'll send it to you unopened. That way you have an unopened pack that has an Ellie De La Cruz or Evan Carter rookie in it. And then you can decide to keep it unopened or to open it. Um, so those, those I'll, I'll give those people the chance to have those because I think that's kind of cool. Um, and uh, so those will be available on the Discord in the breaks thing. And then we're going to start selling on eBay Live uh, soon. We'll be doing sync card singles, comics, and toys and uh graded raw all that stuff so be on the lookout of that and then yeah that being said much love to all 107 of you that hung out with us till the end we'll see you guys soon adios peace